five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello everybody, I'm Alex Bennett, and this of course is The Ramble, coming your way as it does each and every uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from, uh, let's see here, 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Daylight Time because we are on the other coast of the United States. Anyway, uh, we got a guest uh, tonight, as we uh, try to have almost every night at this time, and this is a guy who we absolutely love talking to. Ladies and gentlemen, out to San Fran... No, we're not going out to San Francisco, are we, Will do. No, we're in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. What the hell are you doing in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin? Are you going for Sturgeon? Uh, no, but they have good Sturgeon. Uh, I'm doing my little uh, one-man boomer show i'm telling you i've told you once i'll tell you a million times if you want to make it in show business don't call it your little show uh, <laughs> yeah there's your problem that's that's been my whole problem yeah though, you want the, the, the big show well, i'm doing the big, big yeah, show big boomer show i'm yeah. doing my big boomer show yeah now, you always say my little show you always think of it as humble don't you nah. huh nah. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I'm just talking about the size. Really, it's not. It's an adjective, you know, mostly uh, getting... related to uh, gargantua and yeah. the reverse. Yeah. Oh, by the way, please uh, uh, don't mind the fact if I m m wipe my eyes, but they're tearing like crazy. It's allergy season again. September. You know something? I understand now. There's something my wife told me. Her doctor told her. Her allergist said. Allergy season is all year long now. You know. Plus, I think there's something in this apartment house that's killing me. There's some like asbestos or I don't know what it is. You know. Well, you know, September is traditionally harvest. So everything, you know, comes to fruition in September and then it dies in November. And so everything that's, you know, growing uh, is is right now. So I would say April and September would be the worst. Uh, 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 harvesting what? Rats? Uh, <laughs> it's New York City, uh, after all. You know. Yeah, that's true. Hey, right. it's New York. The crops are coming in. Come on. Well, you're not that far from New Jersey, and those things are kind of light, and they float on the air and stuff. Well, I, I you know, things don't. I'm sorry, but things don't uh, uh, grow naturally in New York City, so I don't think there's a harvest here. Uh, yeah, well, you may be right, but I mean, it's cauliflower and tomatoes and and corn, of course, and and pumpkins. You can see them lying right on the ground, and and uh, wine grapes. Where in, in Central uh, in Central Park? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, okay. all, it's all coming to you. I see. Because I'm like about, oh, I don't know, six blocks away from the park. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that has got to be, all right, a just a hotbed of uh, allergy things in there for allergy sufferers. You know. It's a huge park. It's the size of a small city. You know something? It's a huge park, but it's not as wide as you think it is. It's only three avenues wide, something like that. Yeah, but three avenues is a mile. And then it goes from 110th Street to 57th Street. So that's how many blocks, you know. It's about well, six. Well, if it's a mile, and it's got to be four square miles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it... it uh, hey, how many hec uh, acres is that? Heck Hectic I have no idea. But all I know is that I actually, you know, you would think that it's only like about three streets, uh, avenues wide, okay? And and you, you wouldn't think this would happen, but one night, day I decided to walk home, and I got lost in the park. I couldn't find my way out of it. <laughs> That's how dense it becomes at certain points, you know. And it's all phony. It was all planted. It's, you know, it's not, it's not real. I mean, they you know they're real plants, but they were they were it's brought in from somewhere real. else. You know, 
Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so you're doing your. And did you have your phone with you when you were lost in the park? Yes, you... I did, and I had to go to the GPS to get myself out of the park. That's that's fair and right and true and just. That's Actually, what, what I had was a app they had of Central Park that tells you exactly where you are in Central Park, and then that is so cool. I saw the various exit routes that you know. Yeah. So you weren't really lost. Uh, I was really lost. I felt lost. Yeah. You know. Uh, so it was. It was. It was not fun. You know. Uh, I was scared. You know. I thought I'd never. I at one moment I actually thought, what would happen if I could never get out of this park and they find my body days later, di having died of starvation and water deprivation, and they would say. The asshole should have just walked three blocks in one direction. <laughs> you know? He should have walked west. I don't want to be the idiot that died of starvation in Central Park. Although that probably does happen with poor people who use the park to sleep in. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine it has happened. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, so you're in uh, Wisconsin, and uh, yeah. it, what is what is the feel in Wisconsin? of uh, the nation, the pulse of the nation, Wisconsin, because after all, that is, you know, part of the, uh, part, uh, did they vote for Trump in Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah, well, it depends. You know, I mean, it's so schizophrenic because Milwaukee, big city, mm -hmm. a lot of liberals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fancy, educated folk. Yeah. And, and uh, out here where people are making a living mm -hmm. and, you know, you there's there's kind of an arty it's like artists and rednecks here mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, especially because this is a destination wait a, minute, area. wait a minute are you saying arty rednecks artists and rednecks. oh and rednecks because i just don't associate arty and rednecks in the same sentence okay yeah, yeah. like a prius with a gun rack you know if <laughs> So uh, it's it's pretty Trumpy. It's pretty Trumpy. Pretty Trumpy. Wow, that's interesting. That's fascinating. Uh, because I, you know, I, 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 have I been to Wisconsin? I was in, I lived in Minnesota, so I must have somehow gotten to Wisconsin at some point, either just taking yeah. a, taking yeah. a wrong road or something. Were you in Minneapolis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you go due east for 45 minutes from Minneapolis, well, from St. Paul, you'll end up in Wisconsin. Yeah. But yeah. then you, you're in the upper northern Wisconsin. Oh, okay. It's like upper northern Minnesota. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. So what is the pulse of the nation there? What, what do you feel? Uh, uh, well, they think that he's done a good job, and they don't care that he's you know besmirched the office or that he lies or he cheats or he steals they don't care they don't want to believe it is it buyer's remorse or is no, it no, they don't care they don't care what he does why as long as he uh you know stands strong for america and they think that he's doing it stand strong for america what is standing strong for america it's yeah. just an attitude it's it's jingoistic at best. Uh, no, no, it's it's not best or worst. It's just jingoistic. It's, yeah, that's that's the only concept that people can associate with the State Department. They don't understand intricacies and benefits and uh, you know uh, the zero sum that. If if we do well, other people don't do well, and it's better to have everybody feeling halfway decent, yeah. so that they're not desperate. Well, now that's a farming area up there, right? Yeah. And they're being hit badly by the tariffs. Yeah, it's disconnected. Yeah, but I mean, do are they still form in spite of the fact they're starving to death because they're not making money because of the of that situation? Well, farmers always have things go wrong. Everything about farming is a crap. It, it's basically it's one Earth. one one plague of locusts after another. Exactly, and this is just another plague, and they don't take it. They they don't take him personally responsible. Well, they do. 
but it's just it's not enough to because I, I I you know I see on television interviews with people in that part of the country or farmers who say well I voted for him but I'm not going to again after this because I don't know. see those interviews yeah yeah well you probably didn't go to uh, leftwingtelevision.com you know. <laughs> Tommy Pinko, Yellow Rat I just, I just don't, you know, I can't imagine anybody of any modicum of intelligence finding this guy a good time at this point, you know? I mean, how are you a Christian and you don't mind him grabbing women by the pussy or going out with a porn star or dating well, a playmate? Well, his third wife was pregnant with his fifth child. Huh? Well, his third wife was pregnant yes. with his fifth child. Yes, exactly. How, how, do, they, how do they even... You know, if they consider themselves good Christians, how do they even, do they just turn a blind eye to that? Yes, uh, a very simple prepositional phrase. Well, yeah. I don't uh, agree with all of his actions and everything he tweets, but, you know, and that's that's it. That, that, that absolves yeah. him of everything. Well, I don't agree with everything he does or says, but, yeah. you know, and then... So I've, if you had to put your money on the next election, where would you put it? If it's a fair election, he loses. Okay. And? If it's not a fair election, hello, Canada. How, <laughs> how would it be? How would it not be a fair election? What would happen? Oh, last I mean, one, not a fair election. Well, yeah, but the Russia was involved, but now we're aware of that, so we're trying to do everything to prevent that kind of intervention. Huh. Oh, you you have your doubts. <laughs> that was four years ago. That was four years ago. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Do you know how much technology has advanced in four years? And we're we're still using that playbook. We're still we're st we still haven't plugged the holes from twenty sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And now they got 2020 holes. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, 75,000 votes was the entire election. Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Yeah. 75,000 votes. He won total cumulative in those three states would have switched the election. And I think uh, they found him, and I think they're going to find him again. Well, and I think all hell is going to break loose. But then... 2018 was encouraging. It was encouraging, but those were local, basically local elections, if you want to put it that way. Okay, yeah, a little yeah, bit, a, probably a little bit harder to scam, you know, because you can't do it with a wide swath. What these, what what Russia did at the very least was like go on to Facebook and say all kinds of things and start all kinds of rumors and. You know. Then you have to ask yourself, does he want to win? Well, you know, the first time I didn't think he wanted to win. It was like, you know, I, I thought of the last election as uh, the sequel to the producers. <laughs> you know, what if we do, yeah, every, yeah, yeah. what if we uh, will run for president, we'll get all the money that you get for that because you get to keep it afterwards, right? And then we'll, we'll do everything we can to lose the election. Where do we go right? You know, where do we go wrong or whatever the line was in the producers. But it, it's like the producers. It's like if you said, let's see what we can do so you don't win this election. And the answer to that question is you won it. Oh, what do we do now? I mean, I wonder if that, that night he just went, oh, fuck. You know, I had all my plans for what I was going to do if I didn't win, like start a television network and da, 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 and whatever. And all of a sudden, he found out he won. Now what do I do? I think he will again. Huh? Because he's made so many contacts, you know, and he's the former, he, he will be the former president of the United States. He'll be just walking around and you know yeah. everybody will treat him like a president you know and, now, now that i think about that i would love to see the library <laughs> one book <laughs> and it hasn't been colored in yet no it's the art of the deal that's it that's the uh, book that's the uh yeah every book he ever read one book you know that was only because he was proofing it <laughs> I, I don't even think he read it 
<laughs> oh, it's amazing. So what are you doing these days? Nothing. Nothing. And getting away with it. Huh? And, get and, it, getting, and, get, away with and it. getting away with it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of bored. I wish I had a job. You know, I wish I had some place to go, you know, every day. I mean, you don't know what that's like because you, for you to go, it's, you know, your computer, right? Uh, and then when you do go to work, it's you travel to somewhere and you sit in a green room and then you do your act and you go home. Yeah, it's a whole process. With me, it was a whole thing of, I like getting up in the morning and going down to the station, you know, going to some place to do a program. And uh, even in this day and age, I probably would be asked to do it from home. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't like, I, I mean, I love having my, my little studio here, but you know, I just don't feel I'm doing a show. I, I well, just feel I'm not just you it's it's everybody you remember paul wells yeah, yeah paul course. wells produces uh, the will and willie show and once a month we try to get together and do a little podcast so i talked to him on occasion and he's still working at a radio station in santa rosa but he only does one shift a week yeah and he tries to syndicate it's a three-hour thing but he's telling me about this station they have two employees two employees at the station they have one person who comes in and does a 12 to 6 shift every day every day seven days a week 12 to 6 and everything else is mechanized everything else is automated it's that it's from from somewhere else yeah, but that isn't just one station that's all that, over the country yeah you yeah, know all over the country it used to be there was a law they changed recently where your your transmitter you had to have your studios where your transmitter was, at least in the area where your transmitter was. You used to have a studio. You have to have a studio presence. And you need so an engineer, yeah. Now you don't have to. Now they can just have that transmitter and they can feed it from New York or they can feed it from Omaha or whatever. So, what? you know, I mean, what he's seeing there is not uncommon, you know. I'll tell you, the, the, the day I had a wake-up call, and this was many years ago. This was maybe... Oh, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that, 20 years ago when I was working at, for Clear Channel for a short time. And um, um, uh, Lori, my newswoman, had gone over there and was doing um, uh, shows for them for all their other stations. They would do what you call voice tracking. In other words, they would voice track the show. Like, and here's the music of so-and-so, and here's so-and-so playing blah, blah, blah. You know, And that's all you would do, and then that was sent out. And that way, she did a, what was it, a six-hour shift on Saturday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But she came in on Friday and recorded it. And they only paid her for the time she spent recording it, and they told her she could only take an hour and a half on each one. And then they were paying her at a rate of, oh, I don't know, something like 10 bucks an hour. So they got 12 hours of programming out of her for something like, you know, uh, 30, bucks. 30 bucks. That's what happened to this business. So, you know, there, when I say I'm looking for work in the radio business, I'm sorry, it really isn't out there. And even if I got it, it would be, I, you know, the money I would bring, bring in had, it would have nothing to do with the fact that it was being compensated by the fact that I was doing a show somewhere. But, you know. Even some place like Sirius, which is now the last, there are two things you do when your career is is finished. You either go to Sirius or you either start a podcast, one or the other, okay? And in the case of Sirius, you go over there, there are people, the average person over there makes $35,000 a year. And some people make a lot of money like Howard, but then the rest of them make $35,000 a year. I mean, I was making maybe triple that, a little over triple that, and that's probably why I got fired. I was costing them too much. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. So there's no money in the business, you know. And imagine, you thirty-five thousand dollars for, say, a producer's job, as an example, and you're expected to live in New York City. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. You know, so, but that's the way it is all over the business. You know, they're just paying people next to nothing, 
most of the programming, as you say, comes in from somewhere else, you know, and there's just somebody sitting there watching it, and the fact they don't even have to be sitting there watching it anymore, you know. The laws are such now that they can just send the signal to the station and, hey, if it goes off the air, well, it goes off the air, you know. We'll have somebody on call that can go down and flip a switch. Yeah, in San Francisco, they just closed down KFOG so that it could be uh, utilized as the FM simulcast of KNBR, yeah. the sports station. Yeah. Why do you cool. need to hear sports talk in stereo? Why do you need to hear two stations that are doing sports talk? You know? Same thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they did that to save money. They've got, they, they don't have a whole station staff to pay to keep that station on the air. They just simply... Why, you're splitting your audience anyhow. You already got the AM signal. Yeah. And you get 50,000 listeners, and now you got the FM signal. And yeah. you're getting 25,000 and 25,000. You're getting 50,000. You're not going to pick up listeners. No. No, I mean if they aren't Why listening, to, if they aren't stations? listening to KNBR already, they're not listening to KNBR. Right. Yeah. Oh, it'll be more convenient. No, it won't, because an AM signal is far easier to pick up than an FM signal. You know, you got to have an antenna for an FM signal. So, I mean, but it, 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 the only reason it happened, I don't know, is that Cumulus? I think that owns that station. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, they're going broke, and they have just been they've been selling off stations. They sold off um, WABC K -L -O -S, here in New York, right? huh? KLOS. They sold KLOS. They've sent, sold a lot of these legacy. Oh, uh, WPLJ here in New York, a station I work for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just went all. all uh, they sold it to somebody, and it went all religion. Oh. <laughs> this was a legacy rock station. It went all religion. You know, so I mean, it, it's just, it's terrible what's happened to her. There is no radio. I tell people when they say I'm in radio, I says there is no radio. You know, there's the internet, you know, but it, it, that's a clusterfuck. There's so many people in it that how the fuck are you going to compete for, the, for ears in that situation? You know, they're like two people making money off the off podcasts and the rest are just claiming to. You know, so. But uh, uh, as you say, it's all it's all changed. I mean, it seems like a time suck. What happens with you? You know, you go into a town, and then you look for the local. You used to look for the local radio station to do some stuff with, like a morning show to plug your no. gig. Are Doesn't they, happen anymore. Really? Yeah. I mean, there, uh, nobody has comedians on in the morning, or they don't have morning shows any longer. Well, it's a dearth of both. But also, uh, I'm not on Comedy Central, so uh, the hot radio stations, the rock and roll stations, the, the top trending stations, you know, I can go on news talk because I do uh, political stuff. Yeah. yeah, so I, but that's about it. They don't, they don't want somebody my age on, the, on their little radio show. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, I, uh, Ageism in comedy always was amazing to me because, to begin with, we always used to revere the older comics as being the really good ones. You know, because they get they, better. You they, get better. You get better you, you, with your craft. Um, and uh, I just couldn't see how it mattered whether you were older or not. You know, but I bet you, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Louis Black, who's an old comic. Yeah. I bet he's having a harder time getting gigs now. Huh. I'll bet you. Do you see him that often with specials? No. Yeah. N no. You know, and but, he's he's maybe one know, of the best. I think he's. I hmm? think he exceeded his wildest dreams. So. Oh yeah, yeah. no, he definitely did. You know. So he can, he can you know cool down now, and everybody knows who he I, is. Because I had him on my show on Sirius a couple of years ago on a couple of occasions, and the first time he was on, he says, "You know, I've done your show before." I said, "When?" He's in San Francisco. He was one of the guys that traveled through, you know. Yeah, yeah. He said, but you probably don't remember me because I wasn't doing the same act. He says, uh, a few years later, somebody gave me the advice, start screaming, and I started screaming, and I got popular. He said, we, I, 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 my advice to any comic is start screaming. Because <laughs> to begin with, you're going to be the headliner because nobody wants to follow you. <laughs> right? 
he said. And secondly, it people pay attention to that. You know, he says that's why I do the rant. You know, but I mean, I just don't think of age as you know. I mean, hell, Rickles was funny till the day he died, and he was in his nineties. Comics get funnier. Yeah. Uh, the only two people, the only two arts that are allowed to age, are graphic arts. Everybody wants the old artist, mm -hmm. you know, and blues musicians. Everybody wants uh, to see well, the you, old, yeah, the yeah. classic blues. Musician. Nobody wants a teenage blues musician. It's yeah. like you know, <laughs> you're singing about life. I mean, what do you yeah. fucking know about life, you little punk, you? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I love these kids, you know. I've been waiting for this my entire life. You're 17. I went to the newest <laughs> Avengers movie, and it wasn't very good. I mean, what are you going to sing about, you know? <laughs> what do you have? What do you got, you know? You want you want Blind Lemon you yeah. know, Jew Boy, Someone you know? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, it's just, uh, it, it's just amazing. Um, hey, do, you, do you get to feel, we'll take a few extra minutes here. Do you get to feel your age after a while? I mean, with the world around you, and that it just doesn't seem to make much sense anymore. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, to uh, consume it every day, and mm. so to see all the intricacies of uh, how it how it expands and what's contracting and how it's yeah. Changed. But that that's so, that's nice uh, observation. I don't notice it. I don't, uh, I don't really, remember. but you don't. All I know is you not being able to get up after I fall down as quick as I used to be able to, or, or uh, you know, not being able to see things as well. No, but or, do you ever have those moments where you go, you know, when I was a boy? You always. Ever, you, of course. So that's always. what I'm saying. You know, that, and, and I'm beginning to think, you know, I, I grew up in a time where you had the McCarthy hearings and you had the House on American Activity Subcommittee and you had all kinds of things, right? And yet, it was the 50s and it was kind of like, I was a kid growing up in Marin County. It was like La La Land. The world was a wonderful place in which to live and it was very simple, you know? So, I well, we had four TV channels. Four, you, 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 it's, it's th a three. What do you mean four? Wait a minute. Did we have four? Yeah, you usually had three network and an independent. Right. And that was it. And you know what was good about that? You really didn't have much of a choice. So therefore, you had to get along with what you had. You know. Yeah. You didn't sit there going, "Gee, I wish there were more channels," because you couldn't even envision more channels. And you know what? There's good TV on. People learn how to make good TV, or the, or the good guys got access, finally. Well, you, you know what was great why, why about... Was, why, why did TV suck for so many years? Well, recently, it started to suck. Here's the problem. Uh, in the beginning, you had a bunch of people trying to invent the medium. They'd been handed this medium, but they didn't know what the fuck to do with it. And the first no. thing they did was try and take radio shows and make them into TV shows. Or but the then theater. So, yeah. Then somebody learned that you could do something like I Love Lucy and have your own hits that were basically television shows and not recreations of old radio shows. And that, but in the early days, you could go on television. Ernie Kovacs is a good example. An experiment doing any wild-ass thing you wanted to do, and because it was TV and it moved... And it was cheap. And it was cheap, you know. So it was a time when you could experiment with a medium. That's why I liked cable so much in the early days and did Midnight Blue, because it was my, uh, I had always yearned for the day where I could find a medium that was ready to be defined. And I defined it with blowjobs. What can I say? You know, so. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of a lot of time here, uh, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Will. For sure, the honor's mine. And let's do it. Uh, Huh? You take care. Stay warm in uh, in September in New York, and uh, let's do this again in, in a couple of in a couple weeks. of weeks. We will, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Will Durst. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are back again. Thank you very much, Will. You know what I did? That thing was recorded um, early today. Okay, that was a, uh, let me turn up my sound a little bit. Uh, it was recorded earlier today, 
And um, uh, so I put, I had the shirt on, and I had this on, and I had the hat on. So I took the shirt off, put it away, put on another shirt. Uh, and then just before I went on the air, I got into this so I would match with the, uh, with the, see, with the video. Hold on a second. See if you look. Ladies and see gentlemen, there? out to San Francisco. No, we're not going out to San Francisco, yeah. are same we? Outfit. We'll do no. it. See, same outfit. Uh-huh. So there you go. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me, I'm going to, I, I don't turn on the Skype until we're ready to go now. I've learned that lesson. Um, and I'm hoping that it comes up. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yep, the camera live. Oops. Oh, that's somebody from the last show. Uh, let me open up the Skype line so that you can all call me. And uh, oh boy, uh, the allergies, the allergies, the allergies, the allergies. They're really getting to me. Um, I have my I have my eye stuff here. And I have, I have cream, this eye cream. They made this eye cream. It, it's uh, artificial tears ointment. And uh, we bought it on, uh, I got it when I was in the hospital for my, my thing, my little uh, dealy, uh, my, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the stones. Oh, well, hold on a second before we do that. Uh, uh, with the stones, uh, I, uh, they gave me this for my eyes because uh, that dry air in the hospital was uh, making it very difficult for me to not have a rough eye. So they gave me that stuff, and I used it and liked it so much. Uh, hello there. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's say hello to uh, uh, Josh Wheeler. Hi, Josh. Hello. Uh, anyway, let me explain. So I had the, uh, the eye. This, they gave me the eye stuff, right? So what the hell? It sounded like, and it worked. It kept my eyes from getting all burny and things like that. And I took it home, and then we went online to Amazon, and we bought the stuff. And every time our eyes got really dry, we used this stuff, which was just terrific. All of a sudden, it's not on the market anymore. It was just taken off. And I looked at it, and it looked like, um, let's see, answering this call will place your current call on hold and can um, merge, uh, uh, or you can merge calls. Well, I'm going to merge a call, but this is just uh, an audio only. Uh, who is this? Who Who is this that we're talking to? Hello? Go hang up on me really soon. Oh, no, no. Right. Go, anyway, go, away. Been... go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. I'm talking about hurricane. Go away. Just go away. I said go away. Okay. Remove from call. Here we go. There we go. That, that was, I just don't want to even hear from him, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in the hurricane. Well, I hope it blows you away, okay? Was that nice of me, Josh? Well, he uh, he had a coming, I guess, maybe. Uh, he's, he's suffering the consequences of his past actions. Of his past actions and of his present actions. A while back he called... And he oh, did yeah. something, I and I, I said, hang up, and he said, no. <laughs> you know, well, when you say I that. I missed it. I, don't, I mean, I don't mind when he calls, but it is your show. It is my he show. he has been asked to not do certain things in the past, and then he does them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you should your learn. your show. It's your show. Yeah. You should learn by your, by your lessons. Right. So, so it's going to be just you and I tonight, I guess. I get yeah. I mean, I thought maybe there was something wrong because I didn't see any other. I didn't see any other people. Oh, but is that the case? You, or there? You're, you're the first one else here. Called? No Phil. Huh? No Phil tonight. No, no. That's uh, normally you normally get more calls. I get more calls when Phil's yeah not here. But you know, what the hell? I don't know. You know. I don't know what's going on? There's no uh, football or anything yet. What's, what's no, going on? No, no. There's tennis. There's tennis. Yeah. Which I've had to, I've had to like suffer this last two weeks. I mean, yeah. it's like girlfriend can't say, "Hey, you know, I'll watch this match and I'll watch that match." No, she's got to watch every match. And I go, yep. "Do you really have to?" You know, oh yeah, I got to watch everything. You know, so she watches every match, and I got her ESPN Plus so she could watch every match. You know, but for one month, yeah, I then I get rid of it. What? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really watch tennis. I mean, I I don't mind it. I mean, 
I used to watch uh, Wimbledon in the summer when I was out of school when I was a kid, you know, because we had HBO and it was always on. I think they always had it, but I, uh, I'm not, I'm not really a big fan. Well, we used to play a lot when I was. I don't young, know but... that I was a big fan of just about anything in in, in spectator sports. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if I liked anything, if there was anything that I could watch. It was baseball. Yeah. You know, I kind of I like baseball. From the standpoint that I just found it a very relaxing game, you know, to watch. Uh, you know, I, I found I hated football because football was just too klutzy. You know, yeah. it was a bunch of guys ramming into each other. Well, that's my favorite. So that is your favorite. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, I I love baseball too, but uh, you know, I watch both pretty much. Uh, you know, all year round, depending on what's on. I mean, I'm a season ticket holder to Reds and the Bengals, so yeah, I put a lot of money into both. But football is probably, you know, football is probably my favorite. Really? What, what is yeah, it? About, what so. is it about football? I mean, I, I find it. You know, I said, I, I guess I, I, I said it. I, I, I consider it kind of a klutzy game. Yeah. You know, it's a bunch of brutish guys out there bumping into each other. You know, yeah. where where baseball like is, a, baseball is a skill. <laughs> Yeah. You know? I mean, football is a lot more mentally involved than, than people think, though. I mean, the success of some of the best people of all time were because they basically... I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, like, Tom Brady has lasted as long as he has because he has outthought the competition in terms of... I mean, he's, he's skilled, you know, don't yeah. get me wrong, and he's athletic, but I'm just saying very similar to Peyton Manning and it's kind of hard to explain to someone you know if you don't watch a lot of football but you know I think that Tom Brady and Peyton Manning for the most part knew where they were going to throw the football before they ever even had the football in their hands they just knew mm -hmm. they just they just read a defense and you know they just react to what they saw and then you know they're right you know nine times out of ten you know i mean and which is why they've been so you know both of them were so successful i mean so football's pretty actually it's football is a pretty mental game actually in terms of the way all, both offenses and defenses disguise what they're going to do and and change it right before the snap and then you know blah 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 i mean there's a lot you could say about it but i mean i I think most people like it, and I like it the best because the game experience is better than baseball. Because in what, it is in what respect? Fast action. In, in what respect? The action. Yeah, I mean, you know, every every play. At least in my experience, and I've been to uh, many many NFL games. Mm -hmm. uh, every play, there is just this anticipation that the next play could be big that there really isn't with baseball i mean and i love baseball yeah i mean but it's just football has done a really good job at the crowd experience and just getting everybody into the game and it just seems like everybody is always on edge at an nfl game which i like i mean everybody's just waiting to explode with either, you know, joy or anger, one or the other, depending on, you know, yeah. who you're rooting for and what happens. Yeah. And baseball just isn't, they just don't do a very good job with that. I mean, well, some let, me, let, me, do, let me explain something to maybe. you. Let me explain something to you. Uh, do you remember there was a time when baseball was the national pastime and football was kind of like an also ran? Uh, yeah. It, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Uh, long time ago, sure. Yeah. And even not that long ago in some ways. Uh, I would say back when I was growing up as a kid. Okay, uh, let me uh, let me bring in Jeff here. Let me put Jeff's uh, picture up. There we go. There here comes Jeff, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there he is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me let me let, uh, when I was a kid, baseball was the big sport. Okay, and let me explain to you why. Baseball was a sport that was exciting on radio which was the predominant medium of the age. Mm -hmm. uh, because a guy, could, you, you didn't even really have to, uh, you didn't even actually have to uh, be at the baseball game, just get the, get the line scores and then make up how exciting it was. 
You know, that baseball was a, was a was a visual sport when you were listening to radio. When it made it to TV, TV needs something much faster than baseball. In fact, they made some changes to baseball to make it move faster on television. But it never quite worked the way football did. But football yeah. became big with television, the advent yeah. of television, because it was a very television-friendly sport. Uh, so, you know, basically, baseball, I mean, you're sitting there waiting for something to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. And when you're there, it can be a little bit, you know, I mean, a little bit boring. I mean, I don't mind it as much, well, and I don't care if they speed up the game or slow the game down because I don't I don't give a shit about any of that. I care about one thing only, and that's winning. <laughs> you know? well, I mean, I, I like, if it takes us five hours to win a game, but I don't fucking care. I but like I, the fact I that, that it, yeah, I like okay. the fact that baseball is a boring game. Let yeah. me explain this to you. What I like about baseball is I'm not a big fan. I can't tell you even who's in the who's winning this year or anything like that or any statistics. I don't even know some of the players. But I do know that I enjoy if somebody says to me, "You want to go to the baseball game? I got some tickets." I go, "Yeah, absolutely." Right. Because I love sitting there with friends watching this thing. It was just very pastoral. All right? It takes place in a big meadow. All right? And you sit around and nothing happens. For a long time, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. For ages, it seems like nothing happens. But in the meantime, you're talking with your friends, you're having hot dogs, you're having some beers, you're having some camaraderie. Then all of a sudden, out of that field, something magic happens. And boom, you're yeah. excited. And the person runs here and they slide into first base. And then it's back to waiting again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it's it is. a I very mean, it's a very leisurely game, and it's a great way to relax. Yes, Jeff. But it's also a social, yeah, game, and it's not even the people who play. Yeah, it's the people who are just sitting there next to their their brother in law, or you know, their girlfriend, or yeah, or yeah. or a guy who he kind of knew. I know him, but I've I really. I never, I didn't, never knew him very much. Yeah. But during that game, for what, five hours, you get to learn a lot. That person, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, I mean, it, that's that's kind of what I was saying. Is the difference is just like, I mean, when I I go to the baseball game, you know, I usually go by myself, and I don't I don't really use my seat. I just kind of wander around. I usually stand out. Uh, they got some areas in center field where you can lean up against the thing. They got a place for your drink and all that. And it's just yeah. like. I have my phone out a lot and I look at Twitter and I, you know, look at the, you know, like, and then it's time for the pitch. I look up, see what happens. Okay. It was a ball or it was a strike, you yeah. know, kind of checking. But like when I go to the football game, I don't, my phone's not out of my pocket. It's, it's maybe out of my pocket like twice in the whole game. And that's usually just cause I want to check scores of the other games, you know? <laughs> so it's just different. It's a different, it's, it's, it, it has a, it's, it's, it, football is an exciting game, but it's based on that excitement. You know, all I'm saying is the reason why baseball didn't do as well once television came in is that football was the ultimate television sport. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think uh, basketball is that a television sport. No, I don't really watch it. I mean, there are a lot of people that do, but. You know, I, I will say that, like, one of the things that football has done pretty good that baseball yeah. hasn't been able to do is football has been able to keep more of their teams in the hunt mm -hmm. way deeper into the season than baseball teams. I mean, basically, you have a lot of baseball teams that are terrible, and everyone knows they're going to be terrible, and they're terrible from the first day until the last day. But in football, in week 12 or week 13, yeah. you might only have one or two teams that you can say are definitely done. Mm -hmm. Stick a fork in them, you know, they're finished. Right. So, you know, the games that you're at mean something. So that's what I was going to say was when the Cincinnati Reds went to the playoffs three times in five years and the two years that they didn't make it, they were very close – those games that I attended those five years were a lot more like the football games that I attended because everybody was more on edge because they were every night was even in the middle of June, you know, they're in first place 
It's a big fucking game. You, you want, know, football has that going for them all season long. Yeah, well, you know, with baseball, usually the most exciting part of the baseball game is the last inning. Yeah. You know, if, if things are kind of close. Right. Right? And then it becomes very tense and it becomes very exciting. But it's, I think you go to it for different reasons. And I think, like Jeff said, yeah. it's a far more social game. Yep. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you, you're a sports guy, aren't you? You're into watching sports. Oh yeah, I like football and baseball. Yeah, which do you like better? Um, probably football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it, I, you know, poor baseball. <laughs> Poor baseball. I like baseball. I go to the the, the uh, D-backs games. I mean, I, yeah. I watch all the games on TV when on TV. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just different. But I mean, you know, in 2011, 20, 2012, for example, you know, when the Reds were winning and they had, you know, like you said, the end of the game was where it's really at. And they had a role as Chapman, who's in New York now as their yeah. closer. Yeah. You know, left-handed, he's going to come in. He's throwing 103, 104, 105. I mean, when the Reds were batting in the bottom of the eighth and they were up, you know, by a run or whatever, all they had to do was just put up on the scoreboard a little video of him warming up in the pen, which everybody knew he was anyway. But as soon as they would put it up, I mean, the fucking place would just go ape shit because they knew, you know, it's almost like I don't even want us to score any more runs. Fuck it. Just bring his ass in here and let's get this shit over with. <laughs> You See, know, my, my, because you knew what was he was going to come in and just fucking dominate the, the other side. The, the problem with me in sports was that when I was a kid, my father wasn't into sports. Uh, he was into boxing. He loved to watch boxing. They used to have Saturday, the Friday night fights on television because in those days, yeah. television needed all the programming they could get, and two guys getting in a ring and beating the shit out of each other seemed like a good idea, right? And it was cheap entertainment. They didn't have to do much. Um, and my father always watched the Friday night fights. And one time I said to him, I said, Dad, you know, you're the most decent person I know. You're the most um, nonviolent person I know. And yet when it comes to Friday night, you love sitting there watching this and yelling and screaming at the screen. I said, what is it? He says, well, I just like to watch two guys get into a ring, beat the crap out of each other, and be glad I'm not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, uh, but uh, boxing was very big in those days uh, because any any sport that would take up time and didn't cost much money yeah. was okay. You know, so you had the Friday Night Fight sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. You had wrestling, you know. Uh, uh, you had roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a boring game. A roller derby is, you know, there's no yeah. good seat in the entire house because you know, they just go by you and that's it. You've seen your part of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, football's just, I don't know. I mean, if Charlie's been to a football game live, he can probably tell you. I don't know. There's just something about. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially, you know, late in the game and, you know, it's third down and, defense is on the field and they ring that fucking gong for third down and i mean everybody and it's just like i just want them to fucking kill the other guy's quarterback and that fucking cockhead fucking fumble and we can fucking pick it up and you know what i mean it's just like it's fucking, let's go <laughs> i mean it's well just, you know the funny part about it. it is let me let me give you another thing about me uh i don't know how football's played now i know that sounds strange to you that there's anybody <laughs> in america who doesn't know how football is played but I've never been able to get exactly what's going on. And as much as I have watched it, I still don't understand what's going on. Uh, and I've had some of the biggest football players of all time, people in San Francisco with the, with the uh, 49ers uh, and, uh, and yeah. so on. If Jerry uh, Rice couldn't explain it to Jer you. Jerry Rice was on my show trying to explain football to me i just said please tell me in a simple way how this game is played and he got about two seconds into it in the first minute he says the word down and i go what the fuck is a down you know it's like they 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 jump from this point to that point and they miss me somewhere in the middle yeah you know 
I mean, what's a down? I don't know what a down is. It's not a fucking duck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess the one thing, though, about, you know, like football, whatever it is, football, baseball, whatever, at least that hasn't changed. Is, you know, like, especially for me with football, like all week, you know, you're working, mm-hmm. you know, and then if, you, you know, no matter when you work, but like most people work during the day, you know, in the evening and it's the news and, you know, Trump, 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 or this, that, and the other, and then, you know, and even years ago, if it wasn't Trump, it was somebody else, and mm-hmm. then, you know, so for, like, for me, it's finally, like, and when the fall hits on Sunday, it's just, like, I just want to go the whole day and not hear about that fucker or any of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, all yeah. I want to do is watch this fucking football game. Yeah. I don't care about any of the other stuff right now, you know? It's like, it'll all be there tomorrow. Well, I think it's, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, so I've never been able to get the game, and um, uh, and I've had people come on, you know, like Jerry Rice, for instance, uh, who uh, explained the game to me. And I just, they, they, they just couldn't explain it to me. So then later on I went and won a sports Emmy, and everybody wanted me to give it back, <laughs> you know. And I'm not giving it back. I like not saying either. I've got a sports Emmy, you know, because it just pisses the shit out of every sports person in the business you know um but anyway so you know uh but i'm i'm boy i'm tired today oh yes jeff so i i heard some stuff on uh tv i think it was and they're talking about all these people with guns and and in the you should be able to go into this store but you can't bring your gun there, but you can buy the bullets, but you can't. All no, that. No, you can't okay. buy. You can't buy the bullets. You can buy the gun. That's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. whatever. The That's kind of like saying, "I'll sell you the razor, but no blades for you." Yeah. <laughs> you but the next thing is, the lady goes and she's talking, and she goes, "Well, you know, my my cousin is a real sportsman." Yeah. And I said. What the fuck does that mean? You take a gun and you shoot somebody, or do you shoot a dog? Or I'm not a dog, but well, by accident, it's probably. But what the fuck are they doing? It's like no, no, no you can go out. It's and, so it's strange. Like, you, you can get this. You can go out and you can kill a deer, but if you shoot a dog, then you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. That's right. Yeah. I, you know, all these people talk about, uh, I need my, my gun for sport. And I say, well, how do you do that? And, well, I go out and I hunt deer. Well, how do you do that? Well, we get, in the, we get in the deer blind, and then we wait for them to come over to lick some salt that we've laid out for them, and we blow their fucking antlers off. Now, how, you call that a sport? How is that sporting? I mean, you want to make it a sport. Strap some antlers on your head and go off after the deer on his own terms. The deer should have guns, too. A deer, they could, you know. But, I mean, I don't consider killing little animals sport. I know that's getting a lot of you out there pissed off at me. I can see me getting some people unfollowing me from Facebook for saying that. But really, it, 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 there's nothing sporting about what they consider being a sportsman with a gun. Uh, but what happened was is that at Walmart, they, they felt they had to take some kind of action. Why? Because people got killed in their store by somebody with a gun. Okay? So they had to do something about it. So they, they didn't want to piss off the, the, the gun owners. But they didn't want to piss off the people who want them to get rid of guns. So what they did was they got rid of the bullets and said, Mm -hmm. if you're going to come into our store, please do not carry your gun as a sidearm. Please put it away, okay, so we can't see it. It's not open carry. Well, have have they done much? No, they've done absolutely not a fucking goddamn thing. They've just tried to appease the NRA people while at the same time appeasing all the people who want them to get rid of the guns. But they're not getting rid of the guns. And, they're, you know, I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. How do you feel about this issue, Josh? I mean... Well, 
In the Walmart specifically, you mean? Well, Walmart and guns in general, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not for the banning of all guns. I mean, I'm just not. I mean, I have traveled extensively throughout the country, and there are, just, I mean, there are certain places that I can understand why a person would want to own a weapon. Now, I said, you know, a gun or a weapon. I didn't say, you know, a fucking mass destruction weapon of war, you know. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, my wife and I travel a lot, and we're going to travel a lot more, and I can just tell you that some of the places that we're going to go and stay, you know, in the Airstream that I pull behind our our vehicle, I mean, I'm going to have a fucking weapon, you know, because... Uh, it's you just don't know where you are and i mean it's, you know we go places where you could legitimately be eaten by a bear <laughs> I mean, you know, well so, now, now here i, mean, he, uh, I was going to mention that i had a friend bruce david uh, and bruce was always against he was against guns and everything and then he moved yeah. up to the he moved up to the mountains yeah uh and uh he bought a gun yeah i said why would you buy a gun he said cuz there's there are bears around here yeah you know. And then, right, and I mean, and just like our last trip out west, I mean, we drove places in Montana and Wyoming, you know, and you would see a house out there, and I'm thinking, you know, yeah, if I lived in that house, I would have to be armed. I mean, for, for animals and for people. I mean, if anyone comes around in some of the areas that we went through, it's not like where I live and you can call the police. I mean, like, we went through places that if you called, first of all, it's going to be a sheriff, and they're not coming for a while. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, because they're, you, they, I mean, I don't, it's just, it's hard to explain if, if people haven't traveled in some of those areas. If you haven't driven some of the back roads through Montana and Wyoming and Idaho and places like that, the sheriff isn't getting to your house for half of an hour. You know, so now the chances of something like that actually happening in somewhere like that are very, very minimal. But I'm okay with people being allowed to own a weapon for protection. But a weapon for protection, in my opinion, is not an out and out assault rifle, you know, and especially a modified one that is basically made to kill, you know, people as quickly, as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, you don't know how I many mean, bear, you, don't how, you don't know how many bears are coming at you at one right, time. Right, exactly. You know. <laughs> right. yeah, so, yeah, I mean, handgun is fine. You know, I mean, certain other kinds of you know hunting rifles and things of that nature. I'm not. I don't want to ban and melt down all weapons. I mean, I I've never felt that way. I mean, you know. And then there are just certain people in this world that need to be shot. You know. You know. But, but you know. Things, you know something. If you, you know? if you have a kid. Uh, you don't have any kids. I don't have any kids. Right. Um, Charlie, do you have any kids? Three. Three. Okay. You have kids and they do something bad. They play, they have a toy and they use it all wrong and they're whatever. You stop them from using it, right? You put them on timeout with the, with the, with the particular toy. Uh, I think Americans have proven they don't know how to use guns properly. Mm -hmm. You know that they don't know how to how to how to respect the the gun ownership and the right to own a gun. Uh, and if they were responsible in it, we wouldn't have people going nuts over these things. I mean, when they're available, they're the first, especially now, the first uh, first the thing people will use to get it at even with other people. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just think that. We have to be in a timeout. I mean, look at Canada. They're really responsible gun users. They don't have that many gun deaths up there every year, probably hardly any at all. If they are, they're accidental. Uh, uh, they don't have this problem in a lot of other countries, but we have it here. We have some kind of mania about guns. And, and uh, it makes no sense to me. Guns scare the shit out of me because I've told you the story before about how I had somebody pointing a gun at me for almost an hour, cocked in my face when I was a kid. And after that, you know, I didn't think very much of guns after that. And by the way, if I had had a gun, there was nothing I could have done about it. You know, so, I mean, 
I, you know, I, I, I can see guns, for instance, I lived in the, in the hills of Montana. I could see it because there might be some predators that I have to, and I would probably have a rifle in that particular case. There are predators who would probably be a, be a problem to me. Uh, David Letterman tells the story about he has a home in Montana. And uh, he came, he was in the house one night, and he heard some noise, and he went downstairs. There was a bear in his fucking kitchen. Yeah. And he literally had to get out of the house, get in the car, and go, and go find some animal people to come back and try and round up the bear. But by that time, he was gone. Yeah. Uh, and does happen. You know. But, you know, if you're living in the, in, in the, in the mountains like that, you perhaps need a gun, yeah, for that, but well, not not for anything else. Yes, uh, Jeff. We we occasionally have bears around here where I live, mm -hmm. and the reason that they come here is because people put food outside. Food. Yeah. And they're hungry, yeah. and they're hungry. particularly around. I guess it's March. March. Yeah. It's the time I was at when uh, they were asleep, and now they wake up and they're hungry and and you know and need some food. So everybody who does that all of a sudden realizes there's bears here. What the heck is going on? And they tell them, hey, don't put you know don't put stuff outside. And and then guess what? Yeah. The bears go away. Yeah, well, bears basically are just looking for food. That's you know? right. They're not looking to eat people or anything like that. Oh. You know. Right. Uh, so you, no, you're right. You know, you don't even need. You don't need a gun. <laughs> you need a, a brain. <laughs> a little bit yeah. of knowledge. By the I mean, way, it's true, but but I mean, you know, just like but we're we're we visit a lot of the national parks and stuff so i mean we've been out you know yellowstone grand teton and up to you know glacier and those kinds of places and i mean it is it is there is a chance you know that you can come across wildlife you know that can that can harm you or kill you and you have to take steps for that if you're going to go out you know on some of the trails and hike or whatever and you know even even at night i mean you know, some of the campgrounds that you stay at are like you can't tent camp, for example. You have to have a hard-sided camper because the area is so well known for bear activity, you know, and a, a tent isn't going to do anything for you. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it just it just depends where you are. But even if even like where I okay, live, but, though, I but, live but you see what you're doing is you're giving uh, very real scenarios where a gun would be needed. And it's and not once have you mentioned a human predator. Right. You know, but right, but that that's what I was gonna say though was but like I live in a residential neighborhood and it's very safe. We don't live in a uh, large city or anything. I mean not that all large cities are crime infested or anything. I'm just saying it's a very small farm community, very rural area. And, you know, uh, you would be having a totally different argument with most of the residents that live in my town. I mean, most of those residents that live here think they have the right to own, you know, pretty much anything that man can manufacture. And, you know, how God, you you know, how dare you tell them they can't. And I guess what I was saying was I I even feel like here, though, you, sh you, you, you should have the right to own a weapon, in my opinion. And I do believe that's constitutionally protected. But that doesn't mean any and all weapons. You know, I mean... One nine millimeter handgun that can hold, you know, fourteen bullets is totally different than an assault rifle that I can basically lock myself in my house mm -hmm. and hold the police off for days at a time because I've got six or eight dozen of them and ammunition stacked up everywhere that you can look and I can, you know, they basically gonna have to shoot a missile in my fucking house before they can. Okay, get it. but different. but here here then comes the big question and that is. If we could, we make a law where we say, "Yes, you're entitled to have a gun, one gun." Okay. I that, think we probably could. Yeah, one gun. That's your right. You to have one gun, but you know there are more guns in this country than there are people. Yep. Some people have yes. 10, 20 guns. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They should only be, oh, yes. you should only be allowed to own one gun, and if you found that you own two guns, off to jail you go. Yeah. And if you made that a law, maybe there'd be less guns out there for people to right. lay their hands on. 
and then you yeah, wouldn't, you also wouldn't be violating the Second Amendment, which everybody, yeah. I don't know, you know, we seem to take that amendment more seriously than we take any of the others. Yes, you I know, agree with that. The right of free speech isn't as assiduously enforced as the Second Amendment is. Sure, you know, and and you know the the um, the amendment that might get violated the most by the government is probably the Fourth Amendment, and mm. yet most people don't care, right? I mean, government probably infringes on your privacy more right. than they ever do your right to own any sort of weapon, R right? And, and yet, yet everyone's always obsessed with the one about the weapon and not the one about your privacy, and but maybe that's what allows the government to. To get away with it, you know, is the fact that people are distracted. Yeah, but I mean, but isn't that amazing though that, that we 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 are so pathologically sick in this country that that Second Amendment has become an obsession over, say, the Fourth Amendment about privacy. Right. When I, yep. you know, I I think we should care about privacy over over owning a gun. I don't care if you want to take away my right to own a gun. I'll live with that. I don't have any need for a gun. You know, yeah, I mean that that would be my thing about, you know, like owning a weapon is a lot of people want to own a weapon with the express purpose of using it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're allowed to hunt and, and I can understand that one, you know, a little bit. But if I went to the somewhere and I bought a, you know, nine millimeter handgun and I put some bullets in it and I put it in the drawer next to the, the bed my goal would be for that gun to still be in the same spot when I die, right? Because I don't want to have a confrontation where I have to shoot someone. Well, here, I mean, here are a couple of... Oh, here, I will, but I don't want to. Here are a couple of questions, though. Let's say you have a gun, and let's say there is an intruder. There are far, far many more abilities you need once you have that gun and you have it for protection like that when mm -hmm. somebody enters into the situation. Number one... Most people who own a gun, when an intruder walk, walks in and it comes, push comes to shove and they got to pull that trigger, can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when that happens, there maybe wasn't a gun. Maybe the other guy didn't have a gun. But now he knows where there is one and it's in your hand. Okay? Yeah. More people get killed by their own guns at the hands of other people than, than you could possibly imagine. And what you do is that when you have a gun and now there is an house invasion and maybe that person doesn't have a gun, okay, they just want to come in and rob your house, okay, now you've brought a gun into the equation. And unless you're ready to use that gun with impunity, uh, I'm afraid you're going to get killed by your own gun. That is a possibility. I mean, I can tell you that my, my philosophy on it is and the way I practice it is, I mean, if I, if I have to, I will, I will shoot someone. And I can tell you right now that I will fucking sleep fine. But if you break into my home, basically, you know, like I live in a two-story home, and you break into my home in the middle of the night, and you're milling around downstairs, I'm going to call the police. And you stay down there, and you want to try to steal whatever you want, I will let them handle it. But I tell you what, you come up the fucking steps where I'm at and where my fucking wife is at, mm -hmm. you, you fucking will be shot. I mean, I, I don't Well, I mean, if the guy, if I the mean, guy sees the gun... I'm not fucking minute, waiting. But if the guy sees the gun and then he stops, are you going to fire? If you come off those fucking steps, yeah. I'm not asking any fucking questions. See, I, I don't mean, know, I don't know that I could pull the I'm trip. armed, leave I, this house immediately, and if you don't turn around and fucking leave, I'm not fucking waiting. Why not shoot for the legs? Well, I, I, I mean... I mean, are you, are you going to shoot to kill, Josh, is the question. Hey, look, I, I, if you can do it, I think two in the chest and one in the head is perfectly fucking acceptable. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just think, you know, this is my fucking home. Damn it. I was thinking of robbing. I was coming. I was here and you were warned. I was thinking of coming out and robbing your house. Damn it. Now I'm, I, I, I guess I've mean, changed my I'm, mind. I'm just, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm up here. My wife's up here. Yeah. You want to stay downstairs and you want to take personal property. Uh, the police can handle that. But you come up those fucking steps and you turn that corner. You've broke into my home. I'm going to warn you that I'm armed. You need to leave immediately, or I will fire. Oh, okay, okay. Now you're around. now you're saying you will warn. 
Okay, so you, mean, you you wouldn't just shoot and ask questions. No, because I think there I've seen too many stories of that where you know like someone's kid came home breaking curfew and they've shot their own kid. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say you know, who are you? You know, I'm armed. I'm gonna fire. You need you know, and if you know it's oh it's your dad. You know, I didn't want to wake you or you know I mean it's like yeah I mean that you know people do that all the time. I mean I don't yeah. know how many times I'm, we mean. Yeah. I think we read a story about that one or tw once or twice a year. I'm your I'm your son, Marvin Gaye, and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but no, I mean it's just I mean I don't have a problem with people having that right, you know, to personal protection. Now I know there are some people that listen to you that think that I'm crazy that that I'm I'm going too far with that, and I mean I I respect you know the well, fact that they think I, I understand where you're coming from own a weapon I mean, I, but I, I in my case I couldn't do it you know I know I couldn't shoot and and perhaps kill somebody I, I, that would, I understand that, would, that that would live to, with me till the day I died yeah okay I mean, me I I just it it wouldn't me I I don't I'm not big on people you know like now. I could like clip a bunny rabbit in the road and I would feel bad for like two days, you know, I mean, you know, because it didn't do anything to me, but like a human being, I could gun someone down in my home that broke into my home and, and fucking yeah. throw the body out on the porch. When I was, when I, when I was fit, when I was 16 and I first got my license to drive, I, I accidentally ran over a cat as he was running across the street in the middle of yeah. the night. That'd be bad. <laughs> and to this day, I feel bad about it. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, um, but I just, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm just one of these people that goes, you know, guns. I just don't understand it. I don't understand our preoccupation. Yeah. I with get it. it. I mean, you know, I, I we, 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 I just, I, if more, I guess I'm okay with the middle road. It's just we just have to get more people that would be more middle of the road, like I probably am. But it just seems like people thinks that. People think it has to be like all or nothing. Okay, but you know but, what I mean? but 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 uh, for a moment, forgetting the Constitution, uh, do you think that there are some people that shouldn't have the right to bear arms? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so what do we do about them, and how do we get those people uh, get guns away from those people? Because you got the NRA sitting there going, they don't even like what Wal what Walmart's doing right now. Yes. And what Walmart's doing yeah. is just a pussy move on their part to try and keep people happy. Yeah, I mean, you know, the government has the right to remove rights from individuals under special circumstances, yeah. you know. I mean, felons can't vote, right? I mean, in most cases, or did we change that recently? That I, I know think that made a, a, you still most states. You know? Right, so, you know, I mean, you can have some of your, you can have your right to happiness, your pursuit of happiness, uh, taken away well, from by the you way, and by the way, the bill of the bill of, cell, the bill of right does, rights does not mm -hmm. uh, guarantee the pursuit of happiness. It guarantees the perfuit of happiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Well, one of the things we haven't discussed is that there's a number of people who kill themselves. Yeah. Oh yeah. On purpose. Oh yeah. And th you know what? They do a lot of damage, not necessarily to themselves, but, the, but for the rest well, of their well, family. Well, let's yeah. talk for a moment about suicide. When people take a gun and blow their brains out with a gun, it's a hostile move on their part. And it's not hostile towards themselves. It's hostile towards the people that are going to find the body. Yep. Okay, because that is a memory that is going to linger with them for the rest of their lives. If you truly want to commit suicide and not bother anybody else, uh, one of the best ways to go to the top of a mountain that's freezing and just freeze to death because it's painless, okay? And then nobody finds you except later on they might find your body, you know. Uh, but people who hang themselves, shoot themselves in the head, they all want somebody to find their body and be bothered by that. And it's, a it's, a, it's an antisocial measure. Yeah. You know, I don't care if you want to kill yourself. I think uh, uh, suicide is an acceptable form of self-defense, you know? But uh, if you want to kill yourself, then do it in a manner that doesn't affect other people. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, it's funny. I had my friend Steve died a couple of years ago, and we went to the hospital right after he died, and he was lying in bed 
uh, were, and he was dead. They were waiting for the for the whoever to come and take the body away, right? And he, for some reason, when he died, he died with his mouth open. So he's lying there, kind of like. I'll never forget that. Yeah. You know, I'll never forget that. I wish I had not seen him that way because, you know, I'd like to remember Phil, uh, remember Phil, remember Steve as, as I remembered him not lying there in bed dead with his mouth open. So I, you know, it, it's, um, and nobody could close it shut because rigor had set in and it was hard to close the mouth, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it it, it, to come in and see somebody dead is not is something that's going to linger with you for the from the rest of you. Anybody here ever have that happen? Where you were in a room where somebody was dead? Not me, but yeah, yeah. It'll somebody linger. else I know. It lingers. It definitely lingers. You know. Uh, oh wait, a minute. I got something to show you. This is fun. This is fun. You don't say I don't earn a living, okay? Don't say I don't have an income. Uh, I just got this. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a bank statement. Well, it is kind of like a bank statement. What it is, it's a residual statement. To Bennett Schwarzman, sent to my business manager from home box office. Oh, well, wait a minute. Here comes Phil. Uh, Phil wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but he get, I guess he heard us talking about uh, the stuff and... Damn I it. just came back from the dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me see here. Scuba diver. There we go. Okay. Uh, and uh, let me uh, let me put that up there. Okay. But first, let me. I'm going to show people this. Um, this is from Home Box Office. Production title: One Night Stand. Comments: Run 205 with Bill Maher. Okay. What I did is I was the announcer on the opening of the Bill Maher Home Box Office show. If you ever hear, see One Night Stand with Bill Maher, uh, the announcer at the very beginning is me, okay? And for years, I've been getting checks for this. I mean, I did this show in oh, 1983, 84, something like that. I've been getting residual checks for, what, 30 years? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it does amount to something. I'm still getting them, okay, for Bill Mars. They don't show any of the others. I did like seven of them, and they don't run any of the others anymore. But I get them for Bill Maher. They keep running his. Thank you, Bill, for getting yourself a show on HBO so they feel they have to keep running it. You ready for this? Um Five four hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Year to date, five hundred nine dollars thirty-eight cents. The taxable amount is four hundred thirty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents. How much do you think they deducted from that five four hundred thirty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. That would be what a uh, hundred dollars. Eighty, no, ninety dollars. Uh -huh. Try one hundred and sixty-two dollars Oh, you're in New York. Uh, no, that isn't the reason. The reason is what they do is I'm trying to remember how they compute this, but they compute it as a one-week check, and uh, then they prorate it over. If I was making this every week for a year, how much would my taxes be? Yeah. And so it's more than it w should realistically be, you know. Uh, but anyway, so I paid, um, um, what is it, $162.88 in taxes, netting me, what, something like $319.54. Uh, Thank you very much, Bill Mark. At least it wasn't a bill. I get one of these every, every year, you know. Um, y yeah. Yeah, I got one from Bill Maher about a half a year ago or maybe three months ago or something like that, and it was for $3.86. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what... Uh, residuals just keep on paying. Just keep on paying. How many years is that now? God. Um, how much does Bill Maher get for the same... Oh, same he, well, I remember the show because I had a fight with Bill Maher. 
Because mm -hmm. he brought me, I tell you this, I've told the story before that he called me into his uh, dressing room and said, you do the opening out there, right? And I, I did the, what we call the studio warm up, right? And he says, do you any, do any political jokes? I said, well, I do a few political things to get them to cheer and to applaud and things like that so that we then have wild tracks for that in case you're not funny and we have to you know, <laughs> make it sound like they were laughing at you. And uh, uh, he said, well, don't do that. I do, I do political. And I look back at him and I said, listen, I know what you're getting for this. You're getting $20,000 for this special. You know what I'm getting? He said, no, what? I said, I'm getting $300 for doing the warm-up. I said, follow me, motherfucker, and I walked out. Uh, yeah, and that was my, that's my memories of Bill Maher. But, hey, it kept paying me money, <laughs> you know. So over the years, I've made several thousand dollars off that thing, you know. The Was that the last time you opened for Bill Maher? That's the last time I opened for Bill Maher. Yeah, and uh, but what what a fucking prick he is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he never was liked very much in Hollywood by anybody. Yeah, you know? maybe he's been better to people now. So, <laughs> did you hear us? We were talking about guns, Phil. Your your ears were your ears burning or something? Yeah, I. Uh... I was listening on the way back from the photo thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do you think? What do you think about my idea that yeah, you can own a gun, but only one? Well, if you look at the Constitution, it says right to bear arms with a it plural, s. Yeah. It is plural, you know. And uh, I, you know, I, I I don't see that any one part of the Constitution is any less important than the other. Well, yeah, but we tend to put much more emphasis on the Second Amendment than, as Josh said, than we do to the Fourth Amendment. Well, nobody's trying to take away the Fourth Amendment. Uh, 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 I, uh, I would disagree with that, but... What do you mean? Yeah. They're constantly mm -hmm. trying to take away the Fourth Amendment, or at least they're trying to, you know, impinge on it. Well... I'm trying yeah, to take yeah. away the Fourteenth Amendment. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... And what, can you, what can you say about a constitution which, in which, and I never got this one, uh, we had, which amendment was the Prohibition Amendment? Uh, 19th, I think. Ni 19th. Yeah, I think so. 19th. And then I they, so. and then they 18th. just. 18th Amendment. 18th Amendment. 18th and 21st. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, eight, so they, uh, so they, women right to vote. so they, they pass an Mistakes. amendment, the 18th, which still exists. Okay. It still exists. But then they go to the 21st and they repeal the 18th. So if they repeal the 18th, shouldn't they just have torn it up and thrown it away? It's kind of like the 13th floor. You know, they got buildings where there's no 13th yeah, floor. Say, what's the 18th Amendment? Well, it used to be an amendment, but there's nothing there right now. You yeah. Know? But, you know, I always thought that the, the, <clears throat> when you tell them us how wonderful the Constitution is and how things, how they, how it's so perfect fact is it's not a perfect document at all most of that stuff was written by slave owners you know uh and and uh, uh maybe the right to bear arms was more to keep the blacks in place and yeah. keep them from you know acting up than to I think uh, it was i think it was more to keep the government in place no, it wasn't. No, no, From it wasn't. From becoming tyrannical. There wasn't a problem. Oh. Then. There wasn't no, no, that it problem. It was with the British. No, there was with the British, but the Brit because we had the right, we wanted the right to bear arms because we wanted to pick up arms against the British, but that's that's not uh, 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 the fact that you know we were afraid that somebody tyrannical was going to take us over. That wasn't the reason for it at all. In fact. Uh, Charlie tended to agree with me. It had a lot to do with keeping blacks in their place and yep. being afraid that the slaves would uh, would rise up. Yeah. Thought it was, uh, yeah, you understand uh, that blacks couldn't bear arms. They, you're right. right. Bear arms is just for white, uh, white people. Well, they didn't have they any have rights. They have long sleeve shirts. They didn't have any rights until uh, until the the Constitution gave them those Emancipation. rights. Emancipation. Yeah. Thirteenth Amendment. Yeah, I mean, they. So you know, when you talk about the Constitution, you're talking about a document that said, "Well, these are the rights that people have, except these people." 
you know, these people don't have those rights. And then somehow we had to write an amendment to say, okay, well, we'll let them retroactively have all those rights. You know, so all right. It's not a perfect document by any stretch of the imagination, and it was written to a time that doesn't exist any longer. But yeah. they recognize that. That's why they allowed for making amendments to it. Oh, to well, change. I think it was Jefferson who said, actually, the Constitution should uh, should be rewritten every 50 years. You know, he said... Slave because, owner. Huh? He was a slave owner, yeah. He was a slave owner, yeah. Yeah, in fact, most of them were. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, you know, the right to bear arms, uh, it's, it, it's a thorny question. I agree with what... Josh was saying about, you know, when you live in the woods, oh, yeah, you're looking muscular. Yeah, right. I'm bearing arms. Oh, you're bearing <laughs> arms. Uh, I would call that bearing a flab, actually. Uh, uh, not bearing. I, I can go like that now with mine. You know. It's when you can do it here. That yeah. you gotta yeah. so I, thought you, I thought you were going to photo class or photo. I, I did. Beat I up did. But you see, I'm the print chair. And when the prints are done, and I don't, I don't like to submit anything for projected, because I don't believe that I believe you should print what you show. And uh, well, who so, died and made you the? Uh, well, uh, I am the print chair, so yes. therefore, <clears throat> when I'm done, I can go. Oh, oh, okay. So you don't stick around for everybody else's pictures. You just well, stick uh, around for yours. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Boy, they must they must love you at this thing. Nobody else wants to be the print chair. <laughs> but I, I got conned into it and I, you know, that's why I gotta be there because I'm the guy that puts the print on the uh, uh, on the uh, light table. Oh, it kinda like Vanna White revealing numbers and letters and things like yes, that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Matter of fact yeah. I even have to read the title uh, as I'm putting the print on the viewer. On the viewer? Yeah, we have a really nice uh, viewer that has uh, color, uh, the right color level bulbs, and uh, uh, so you put it in, in on this viewer, uh, and uh, then the judge looks at it, and it's also projected uh, for the rest of the group to look at. This is too complicated. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why when I'm I, the print when chair. I, when I was a boy, you just went down to the drugstore and you gave them your negatives and you came back a couple hours later right yeah <laughs> actually in the old days you came back a couple of days later but <clears throat> yeah well, anyway so oh i had some other items here i came prepared tonight uh, this is interesting um you know a bunch of actors have come out against woody allen uh, again, because I guess they just want to, you know, keep the rest of the world happy. Uh, <laughs> people like uh, Michael Caine, Timothy Chalamet, Greta Gerwig are among a number of actors who publicly express regret over working with Alan. Oh, they were beating tracks to his door to work for them when they when they wanted it, you know. Well, Woody Allen has had a hard time finding allies in Hollywood since child sexual abuse allegations about him, and his now grown daughter Dylan resurfaced amid the Me Too movement. But one actress whose career got a big boost from her work with the legendary act director, Scarlett Johansson, is firmly in his corner. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Johansson said, I love Woody, I believe him, and I would work with him anytime. She added, It's hard because it's a time when people are all fired up and understandably things needed to be stirred up and so people have a lot of passion and a lot of strong feelings and are angry and rightfully so and it's in an intense time but Alan helped boost uh, Johansson to the A-list he directed her in Matchpoint, Scoop and Vicky Cristina Barcelona she said she has spoken to Alan about the accusations and he maintains his innocence he has never been criminally charged Johansson who is active in women's issues and eagerly supporter of Time's Up, said her conversation with Alan about his past, I have been very direct with him, and he has been very direct with me. So she's on his side. Good for her. You know? 
Um, anybody? Did Bobby Slayton sleep with him? <laughs> no, but he slept with Harvey Weinstein, I think, together. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, there is a... I just love Scarlett Johansson. Oh, yeah, listen, if she's for Woody, I'm for Woody. Because she gives me a Woody. <laughs> You know, uh, but uh, uh, I just, you know, I just think, what, what is the, oh, here, here we go. Here, oh, here comes Ray Renati. Wow, we suddenly get a, a, a larger and larger panel as time goes on here. Let me just, uh, let me just put. Uh, um, Hello. His, yeah, hi, can you hear us? Can you hear us okay? Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Ray? Ray, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can yeah. You, you can hear us. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. What? Hold on, hold on. Damn it. Wait a second. What? I forgot to put in my headset. That's why you don't he, hear us? That's why he couldn't hear us. Yeah. Well, he's finding, while well, he's finding his headset. I found it. Okay. It's too hot for a headset today. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong. What? <laughs> oh, God. Does it work? Do we have to go through technical difficulties now? Any, I guess so. Any hung, guess so. Any hung up on us? I'm sure it was an accident. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll let him just stay there frozen until he comes back. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. What else is happening? You know, I'm... Um, um, Actually, nothing. You know, Trump must be pissed with the hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because all these news outfits are just all hurricane all the time. Now, I'm watching, uh, I'm watching MSNBC. Two things occur to me. Number one, you've got so much about the hurricane on. Don't you realize you also own the Weather Channel? <laughs> and couldn't you just do it over there? And keep MSNBC for news, okay? <clears throat> Say, if you want to find out what's happening, you go over there. But no, that's not the case, okay? Uh, but then they have reporters reporting from the scene, walking in the surf. And I'm going, and, and this one woman's walking in the surf. I swear to you, she's walking the surf, and to the side of her is this bank she could just walk right up on and not be in the water. I mean, how stupid are these reporters? They don't know how to get out of the out of the surf, right? Yeah. Nora O'Donnell it's was uh, broadcasting from uh, uh, supposedly I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Uh, from you know the, a, a wet area where the hurricane was, but it it looked like it was a green screen. And uh, well, she didn't look shit. as if she was in the weather at all. Uh, you know that they had behind her uh, hurricane and, uh, and 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 water and everything, and she was you know she was wearing uh, a jacket, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it didn't appear that she was actually in the weather at all. Well, I'm sure she I was. Think, Ray, I think Ray, she, are you uh, having a problem, Ray? Ray, are you having a problem? Because you know, I if I'd rather not have to solve this problem on the air, you know. He's doing it. He'll just sit there. Yeah. Well, no, but I mean, you know, if you can't get it together, then just uh, do us a favor and hang up. You know. If any of us could get it together, we wouldn't be calling this yeah, show. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I should be happy someone's calling who can't hear me. You know. But no, they they, they go out and they stand there in the surf or in the rain or what? Why? Oh, there we lost him again. Oh, you know why? Uh, drama, huh? It, it, it creates drama. It, it creates drama, exactly. So you know, what the hell? Let me see. You remember yeah. last year That's, during the hmm? during the hurricanes, there there was uh, uh, a, um, a a reporter that was hanging on to a tree. And oh, there were yeah. some people walking behind him in the parking <laughs> lot <laughs> like yeah. nothing was going on. <laughs> it, it, was it really cool. is. That's, I mean, that, that's all drama. I mean, I hate fucking weather coverage. I mean, and, and, and storms, 
kill people, hurricanes, earthquake. I mean, you know. Yeah. And they do damage, but. And I lived in Florida for over a year and went through uh, one hurricane and a tropical storm. And I mean, I, I get it, but every fucking storm that comes along is always the biggest storm, you know? I mean, it's just, it's out there in the middle of the ocean and it's just huge. It's the biggest storm. And every hurricane ever is just like, you know, like if you hold your breath for a really long time and then. <sighs> You know, when you finally... That's what every fucking hurricane does as soon as it hits land. It goes... You know, and I mean, and then it just fucking sits there and it fucking rains and the wind blows for a couple of fucking days. And it's just, it's just like, it's just never... They just always act like this hurricane hits Florida and it's just gonna break off and fucking the whole state's gonna float away, which, by the way, would fucking be fine with me. You know? <laughs> but, it, but it never happened. I mean, well, it's I'll tell like, you, I'll tell you something. I uh, made to, up shit. To begin with, there, you know, some of these are real tragedies. I'll give you a good example yes. of, of a real tragedy. New Orleans. Right. Katrina. A, amazing tragedy. And if you go yeah. down there, there's the Ninth Ward. The Ninth Ward was was just completely decimated. Also mm -hmm. happened to be where most of the black people in New Orleans lived. Okay, uh, it's where Fats Domino lived. Wasn't it decimated because of the break in the levee? Well, uh, yeah, lake, yeah, lake the, 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 the lake break in the levee. I mean, whatever. It was still the, as a result of the hurricane. No matter which way you, which way you parse it. And to this day, I don't think it's ever been totally rebuilt. Brad Pitt went in and built some houses down there for people, and and they started trying to rebuild, but they've never ever gotten the the what can we call it the the the, the help they truly needed to restore the entire Ninth Ward, and maybe at, some areas shouldn't be rebuilt. No, maybe you know, this one maybe this one should have been rebuilt because it was very viable as a as a community, but it was a black community and. People, you know, somehow they don't seem to jump as fast for something like that. You know. I think you're but, reading into no, it. No, I'm not reading into it. I went, I went down it, there, and I, I had somebody drive me around, and he told me exactly what was going on. Is, and is that there the, a possibility the, that the government that, uh, completely was not f trying to fix up the Ninth Ward? It was like, is there, yeah, is there a possibility that uh, maybe? Uh, a lot of people there didn't have insurance, and that and that's why because of the lower income well, I'm area. I'm sure. I'm sure. But mm -hmm. those are the very people who need your help. Yeah. You know, the people with insurance don't need your help. You know, unless yeah, they, they bring in stuff that's got formaldehyde in it. Uh, I guess they brought in a bunch of yeah, uh, yeah, small homes. Camp uh, it, was, it was campers. They were, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here and, here uh, comes Ray again. Let's uh, hope that one. he's got it together here. Let me see here. Uh, um, uh, let me see. Uh, are, you, are you there, Ray? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Can you hear me? Yeah. We, it, we, did you get it fixed? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, now we don't hear you. Now we can't hear you. You're maybe muted. I'm not sure. You're muted. You're okay. muted there, Ray. I'm not sure that he is. Well, he could hear us. We heard him for a second. Yeah. yeah. No, he's not muted. Mm. Uh, he, it's just not working. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you can look and you can see whether it's muted yeah, or not. I'm just, I guess, I was just saying, it just, it's, it's just always the same thing with no, every fine. fucking storm that, for, I mean, no, it's you know, working again. Yeah. It's just, it's always the same I yeah. mean, it's just replay over and, oh, my God, we could have storm surge up to 20 feet. Do you know what that means? And then there's got to be a guy with the graphic, and it could flood your whole fucking house. And it's just like, Can you hear me? I mean, yes, we can hear you. I if I live, like, right on the fucking beach in a shack. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I, know, I don't. I, it's, they play it for all the drama that they can possibly I, soak out of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, what happened in the Bahamas is appalling. It's horrible. I mean, yeah. literally, oh, yeah. uh, you know, but nevertheless, um, are not these people who are sitting there on television going, isn't this horrible, really exploiting these people? <laughs> you but know? it is horrible yeah. what happened in, uh, in the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's devastated. Uh, how about Puerto you know, Rico? How about, how about Puerto Rico? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, crime ridden. But you, you know, wait, wait, you a, minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't let that pass. Crime wow. ridden. Well, you know, all the aid that they were sending down there seemed to uh, well, a lot of it seemed to be uh, uh, taken by what uh, aid, Phil? Crooked people what, like the governor. What and, aid, Phil? No. Uh, there was there was a lot, millions and millions of dollars. Oh, really? Uh, are really? unaccounted for. Really? Uh, water that was sitting on the runway wasted because uh, it couldn't you know, get to the people. Yeah, it's a brown shithole country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, they couldn't even get a governor. Uh, uh, the, the assistant governor didn't want it. The librarian didn't even want to run Puerto Rico. You know, they they got all the way down to the librarian, and they said, "No, no, no, not me." This I'm is bordering going. on racism. Yep. Like uh, librarians are. In racist. fact, probably Charlie would agree it's not bordering on racism. It's total <laughs> racism. Yep. Yeah. I, I, you're almost all called a racism. You know, there there, there, there know are areas that, in which you everybody it, it, had to resign. Phil, there are areas in which you sh you can you can spout Trumpisms, and then there are others. There are others where you can't, and this is one of the ones you can't because the, 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 his entire take on what went on <laughs> down there was racist. Well, did did the governor resign? Did the assistant governor have to resign? Uh, did, did the lieutenant governor did? Did the secretary I believe of state these or problems. I believe these the, problems, if I'm not mistaken, Phil, occurred prior uh, to. Uh, hello, uh, Tim, are you there? Tim? Yep. I mean, hello, besides, who are, who are we to talk? I mean, look at all the crap that go, that's been going on here. Yeah. I mean, give that's, me a break. That's exactly why I, call, I called in to say exactly that. <laughs> Jesus. Say, say it, Tim. It's Penny it's Anti penny stuff in Bahamas. Penny Anti. Penny ante. It's devastating. It's like and they just from got a penny candy store compared to what goes on in D.C. and all the people that had to leave the uh, the Bush, uh, the Trump administration. The Trump administration. And, and and all the Russians that were arrested, and then they say not they didn't do anything, and the whole Mueller thing, and now and do you know that Trump has spent a hundred and nine uh, million, million what was it million dollars to go golfing. Of taxpayers' money. That's uh, you know putting a lot of people to work. Oh come on, <laughs> Phil. How much yeah, of that? Yeah, illegal, illegal aliens to build his palace and statues. You didn't even begin to pay that much in taxes last year, Phil. I think you know, Josh is a greenskeeper, and, you know, I mean, Trump is doing a lot for his ind industry, right? But, but see, Phil, it's like we talk about Puerto Rico, and then you're serious about it, and then we say something about Trump and the White House, and then you try to make jokes. Because it's bullshit. It is not bullshit. I just said a fact. You're so what? You what? Said. So what? Yeah, well, that's, that's what 109 Trump million. Say. That's Trump change. That's what all Trump... Yeah, they always no, make That's excuses, Trump change. It's always Trump change. Excuses, right. <laughs> Yeah, always, always with excuses and jokes, and I mean, it's like the, you can't anytime, anytime there's rather anything, I yell. Any, no, anytime there's any truth about these things, you and other Trump trumpets, 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 just trumpets, like, trumpets. That's a good name for them. Off, trumpets. Make a joke. Oh. Say it's not true. Nothing I can yada, do about yada. it. It's always the same BS. Hey, uh, can, Ray? I, can I make a comment? Sure, go ahead. If any Jimmy. any other politician in history. <laughs> did one of the things on one hour of one day of the week that Trump does, day in and day out, they would have resigned immediately. Anybody else, any a normal politician or statesman would have left. Hmm. He, had, uh, he had Pence flying halfway across the country for an effort to do a commercial for his resort. Jeez. It's just all too blatant. It's just it's never ending. It's just one and, thing and after another. Every Trump, single <laughs> and, and because it's Trump, uh, we can laugh. We we laugh it off because we think it's a reality show. This stuff is dead serious and is going to take us years to recover from. No, that's what bothers me. The farmers will never recover. Most of them. Yeah. You know, Trump owns how many golf courses? I don't know. Four, five, six. He puts, his name, he puts his name on him. He doesn't own very much. He stuff. He, he owns plenty no, of golf. No, he courses. doesn't own. He, he, Tim is right. 
great majority of those he puts his name on, and they pay for the use of the name, and a lot of them want to stop and, paying. And, and what are they doing now, Alex? They're taking, they've taken his name off mucho buildings. The one oh, in New here, Jersey he up. owns, the Doral he owns. Here, here in Manhattan, in, in what was called owns. Trump City, most of the people who have condos in those buildings uh, got together and had the name on the Trump building removed because they felt right. that it was going to hurt their resale value. Unless you're selling it to a Republican. No, I had friends who lived in one of them. And they were on the committee to get rid of the name because the name was hurting the property values. And, you know, these people, they... they going to go down in history as a Benedict Arnold eventually, but we're too busy laughing about it right now because they can't believe it's happened. Well, I don't know. Benedict Arnold had some good things about him. I can't name very <laughs> well, many yeah. about Trump. Uh, yeah. Well, Trump had some good things. He teaches never for us to elect a buffoon again. So I hope we learn our lesson. Well, you know, that have, we never, but, we just but don't Tim, let Tim, like, hey, Tim, my question is, have we, we, to, have we learned our lesson? Well, the Parliament learned their lesson within a few weeks, didn't they? Oh, well, we need to follow the, the example it, it, set by yeah, our what's, what, what's his name in England? Get rid of the, the orange-headed uh, people. Boris Johnson has some real problems going on yep. now. I think he's still got some stuff up his sleeve. Oh, really? I'd yeah, like to know what, what that is. No. Well, he called for an election, and right now, based on the polls there, uh, he'd probably uh, get his way, and so some of those people that defected may end up not getting reelected. Uh, so there's, there, you know, he's, I think he's, Bor I think he's not Bor done. I think Boris Johnson's in a lot of trouble. I think it's you just... You kick Churchill out of the party. Who does that? Churchill's grandson... And the you right. know, and he's a good and he's a good politician. <clears throat> Thirty-seven I, years. I guess he's not representing the people that wanted Brexit. You know that the there was a four the people point. People didn't want Brexit. It was fifty-two they, to they forty-eight. I think I think I, I, because I, Russia put put uh, social media. I think when, yeah, when like Trump is in the same the room Parliament. with when the, Trump is in the same room with Boris Johnson, you describe Boris Johnson as the asshole whose hair is real. Okay. <laughs> You know, um, but Boris doesn't have much use for Trump. Do you know? I, he, I, I heard a story that Boris Johnson, when he leaves to go out in public, tossles his hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be completely settled just right, and he goes, blah, 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 and then he goes out <laughs> with it. That's so he looks the like Bernie a Sanders hair look. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Bernie, Sand Bernie Sanders has the same hair style as. No, him. no. Yeah, it's all tousled and. He's old, Phil. Well, he's, he, just because you're old doesn't way, mean you can't style can, your hair can, the way you I, want I, to. Let me just bring up something can, quickly but. that I heard brought up the other day on television. You know, what's with all these old people being in the forefront of the race for president? Well, if... if, oh, if wait a minute. If, 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 if let, me finish, can, let me finish what I'm saying. Sure. All right. uh, you know, it would seem that in a country in which... People are younger, and uh, that they would be going for younger politicians. I mean, we certainly had that in Obama, for instance, the young candidate for the most part. And then, you know, what do they expect to get out of out of, out of Bernie Sanders or or Joe Biden, who, quite frankly, doesn't look like he's got it going for him? Okay, and um, uh, and what's her name? Um, Warren. Elizabeth Warren. I think we should bring Jimmy Carter back. Oh. He's out building houses after <laughs> cancer. Uh, but, that's who but, we should bring back but, is Jimmy Carter. Th that's why I, I would like to see somebody younger who can bring some new ideas to the table. You know these. Well, well Buttigieg, Buttigieg would be good, but he's got a long, he's got a long road ahead of him. And I think Warren, he, I, Warren's I, not too bad. She's only seventy. I mean, yeah, she's Warren's not as old. Not, she's not. She's not. That's not old anymore. Yeah. Right. Right, guy. Biden's this, seventy-six. Sanders is seventy-seven. Yeah. How old? But, how but, old is Trump? Trump is seventy-four. Seven, yeah. Seventy-four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are a lot of you know. These are a lot of people with one foot in the grave. I should talk. You know. Uh, but these are people. Last with, time I looked, Trump was five years old. Trump is seventy-three. <laughs> 
But it, 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 you know, I mean, I, I just I just wonder if if there's any room for uh, uh, younger candidates to come to the fore. In well, all this. what do you what do you think, Charlie? AOC, Char AOC oh, is going to have a lot of power yeah. okay. real soon. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see who AOC endorses during the next <clears throat> election. She's got a, lot, a pretty big base. Well, she, she's got a big base. She's what she's got is she's got a big megaphone, is what she's got. Yeah. I mean, the press will listen yeah, to everything you, she has power. to say. That's what gives you power. Yeah, uh, but Charlie, what do you, I got an idea. Wait a minute, hold on, a Tim, 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 Tim. There are other people here. Uh, uh, Char Char Charlie, what um, uh, what do you think about a younger candidate? I mean, I know you're for Elizabeth Warren. You know, and of all the people right now, I guess I'm the most for Elizabeth Warren as well. But I just don't know if it isn't my age speaking that, you know. But age doesn't matter to me. It's the ideas. And I like Elizabeth Warren's ideas. Mm -hmm. if, if Pete Buttigieg had, had her ideas, I'd be for him. I, I think he's, I think he needs some, some, see, some uh, aging. You know, he needs a little bit more time to, you know, he's, after all, he's just a fucking mayor of a town, you know. Um, but I do think he is, you know, I, I find him interesting, you know. And who knows what's going to happen in a few years with AOC. Yes, uh, Phil. You know, I, I'm just wondering, these candidates are throwing out these ideas which are really never going to come to fruition, and uh, so why would you elect somebody or vote for somebody that, you know, their, their ideas are so off the chart that, uh, that they're worthless? You know, wh what about doing something realistic, something that could be done, you Did know, you within that? the next couple of years, not something that's pie in the sky? And, you, and all their ideas are all pie in the sky. The, oh, free education, free this, free that. I'm going to forgive all the debt, uh, you know. It's not pie in the sky. Do you know that actually that Dick Cheney was one of the first people that thought uh, that proposed uh, giving everybody a thousand dollars a month, and also, uh, um, yeah, to look it up. He he was one of the first people that, that it was actually a Republican idea originally, and then they would get rid of food stamps and other aid. Well, uh, the uh, uh, Andrew Yang uh, wants it the thousand a month because. Yeah. He believes that our our society is changing, and that with the advent of robotics, <coughs> uh, that we're going to be losing a lot of jobs. And so uh, I think he's looking for a short-term fix to uh, help people reinvest. But uh, you know I, that guy's sharp. He I is. Mean, sharp. You, you and I, we saw that same interview. I mean, it's too bad that he doesn't have time in those uh, in those debates because. Man, he's he's a sharp guy, and he's got his ideas yep. are incredible, and yeah. he's thought you know, through it, everything. You know who the first was? What? What? Who? Tim? Nixon. Andrew. Oh, Nixon, Nixon yeah. got the negative income tax. That's the same thing. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This would just be an expansion of the negative. You, hey, corporations that are worth tens of billions, including the Trump family organization, they don't pay taxes. They get rebates because of the way the tax law. They get subsidies. The oil companies get subsidies. Yeah. Of, you know, that, they would be in business if they didn't. That's Farmers not who you think subsidies. it is. By the way, uh, 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 you're holding up a picture that's not who you think it is. Oh, really? Yeah. No. That, that's oh, not Tulsi? Man. That's not Tulsi Gabbard. No. Well, that is. No, they she's keep saying. surfer. Uh, huh? I know she surfs. No, that's not her. That's not her. Was that it's the play for you? In in so that's not her either? I don't know. You but quit uh, holding uh, it up because we're... No, that's not her either. Uh, okay, all right. It's still nice to look at. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. that, that, everybody's been passing those pictures around saying it is, but it isn't. You know. Uh, oh, hey, well. listen, there's the uh, uh, the theme song. Wow. You can all hear it, right? Uh, this has been uh, kind of fun tonight. Start out with a few people. Now we got a pretty good citizen panel going here, and... Now it's time for me to get the fuck out of here. Uh, 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 Josh, thank you so much for that that introductory uh, syllabus for me on football. Uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, 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 Charlie Wallace. Thank you to Jeff. Thanks to Ray. Thanks to Phil, who got in here tonight. And, uh, of course, to Tim. Tim, always good to hear from you. Uh, I and, think it's the huh? usual suspects that don't call didn't call. So, you know, what the hell? Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, what I think everybody should do is probably give a uh, big, uh, you know, wave goodbye to the audience out there, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's the citizen panel. That's how they, how they, how they roll here. And uh, let me get rid of the uh, Skype uh, so we can uh, let Jack and his crew use the same number uh, for... Uh, which is GabNet Live for his his program. Uh, that's it, by the way. That's all she wrote uh, for tonight. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. Had a good time. I hope you have too. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection uh, tomorrow night at 9:30. Of course, Damian Chaplin will be here with the exchange, and I will be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love.